So ask me a question, really, like a really interesting. Talk about hey Paul, you, Paul. What, what was it like? What was it like? What was it like working on defending Jacob? Um, well, I mean, at, for, from an acting standpoint, it was uh, it was. I'll give you a go ahead. No, you were you were saying. No, keep keep going. <laughs> keep going. Well, Chris, I'm so happy to be sitting here talking to you. Yeah, me too, buddy. How you been? I've been all right. I've been okay. I was, you know, I uh, I feel as if, uh, full disclosure, I'm a little hot and sweaty because uh, I thought that this was in an hour, but it's not. It's now. <laughs> hey, man, I like the honesty. Are you in New York? <laughs> I am. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, upstate, yeah. And you're in, you're in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, yeah. It's hot and sweaty here, too. Full disclosure, I forgot this was today. So <laughs> I mean, they'll, probably, they'll probably edit that out. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, you know, you say that you're in Massachusetts and, and uh, how fitting, because that leads me right to this first question I have Perfect. for you. Perfect. Segment. About defending Jacob, uh, which okay. is set in that part of the world where you're from. That's right. Uh, did, you, did you know this book? How, how did this whole thing even come about? Uh, it's uh, no i didn't know the book uh i was i was actually i was working in new york i was uh, doing my show which you so so kindly came to see me in um i was doing that show and um yeah my team just brought me the the pilot and you know as i'm sure you know it's actually funny because a lot of the questions i have prepared for you are kind of interchangeable because uh i'm assuming with your show as well you only get a pilot or so you know so it's a bit of a leap of faith they brought me the pilot um and i met with mark and morton and you know you just uh, I had some, not concerns, but but when you don't know where the character is going to go, you just got to kind of trust a little bit. So we, we had multiple meetings, multiple discussions, and eventually you just kind of say, you know what, I like these people. I just want to go work with these guys every day. And they're just, you know, fun people to take risks with. Did you know them What about beforehand? you? How did yours come to you? Did, did, did you get the, the pilot or did you... Did you get the whole No, series? I was in a very different situation. Actually, all eight of the episodes were written. It was a completely self-contained oh, thing. See, that's that's it was all done. So I, I actually was, I know it's rare that, you know, you get to read something and it was one writer, eight episodes. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I had the complete thing to start. And it is a little scary when you're starting off uh, because you don't know uh, where it's going to go. And you, you do, you know, it's, it is in, in good faith, but when you're working with good people, which you clearly were, uh, yeah. it's easier to take that leap. Did you know them before? Had you worked with these people? How did how did no, the I team mean, assemble? I had seen Imitation Game, which Morton directed. Um, you know, I had seen uh, some of the, the the Planet of the Apes films that Mark Bombach had been a part of writing. So I, I knew some of their work, um, but it really was just the fact. You know what? It was great. Both of them had. A fourteen-year-old son, or not a fourteen exactly, but but children around that age, which it, obviously the show orbits around. So you can feel the personal connection. It translates into great, you know, creative passion. So at least there, the, you know, it's it's things like that which you can kind of grasp on and, and find the connective tissue to each other when you're dealing with intangibles out of the gate. Um, yeah. Did you have? Because one of the beauties of of my gig was. Morton, the director, and Mark, the writer, did all of them. You know what I mean? Every single show was they were the writer, they were the director combo. Do you have the same thing? Exact same thing. Uh, uh, Dayton and Ferris, Jonathan Dayton and Valerie Ferris, husband and wife, directing team. They did Little Miss Sunshine and, um, and uh, a, a lot of great movies and um, documentaries, and they're, they're terrific. We kind of sought them out, and they directed all eight of ours. So... Yeah. Very lucky. It is true. You know, when you have that kind of uh, singular vision, it makes it a lot easier. I'm always amazed. I, I don't have that much experience with doing a show, but when different directors are coming on every other week, it must be a little challenging. I've seen your show, Living With Yourself, and it's just, it's, it's fantastic. And you really are fantastic in it. I, I said earlier, you are the perfect guy for that, for that role. Well, did you have something you, you wanted Chris. to say to me? Uh, no, no, not really. Is it? Okay. No, they do. Uh, uh, no, that was, uh, that, uh, of course, it seems, uh, it seems <laughs> uh, cheap to just kind of reciprocate. It doesn't seem real, but it's from the heart. You're fantastic. I don't in believe defending you. Jacob. Sure. You have, you well, you know, it's that true. Acting. Every, There's no, that acting. Here's the thing. That's you know, it's true because everybody, Paul. everybody talks about how, because I bought it. This show. 
Um, um, it sounds. Wait, I had uh, a good question. A, yeah, you're you're really you're. You, here's the thing I, that I I think is uh, you. It's very convincing, and it is a an incredibly intense uh, situation, and uh, a character that is really with each episode getting closer and closer to this manic state. I mean, it, how hard is it to mm. sustain that frame of mind for eight episodes? Well, God, I mean, the, the real question that that really should be yours, especially given the content of your show. But but I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to if you had all eight episodes up front, I wonder if your shooting was different because we, you know, obviously it wasn't chronological. So you might shoot something in the in one day that's episode one and then in the afternoon, episode eight. So you really have to hold this entire story. Ostensibly, it's an eight hour movie. You know, you have to hold this yeah. whole story in your head and really kind of turn knobs uh to, to really extreme degrees uh you know from minute to minute from scene to scene um but you know that, that was the beauty of having one director one i i can't even imagine having to swap out directors for each episode and still try to holding that story in your head would become a solo effort you know when you have the same people involved every day they really can kind of hold your hand and walk you through they were a part of everything that was shot they know everything that still needs to be shot and they have their finger on the pulse of of the story, you know what I mean? So then they can kind of modulate the performance accordingly. Um, I was gonna ask you, um, I think the thing everyone wants to know, did you get paid double? <laughs> uh, no. Or did you? No. No, that's I bullshit. Nothing I Sorry, I see, I felt like I had to swear. No. I know I weren't supposed to swear, but I think I had to no, swear. No, no. That must have been really it, uh, hard, though. I mean, I can't imagine having well, to... Well, it was... It what, was how, what was the process? Was you, Would you shoot one whole side and then... No, it was, you know, one it. of the great... One of the appeals, and I'm sure that you uh, find... Found this to be true, too, is, you know, you're, you're when you've been doing this kind of thing a little while, you want to try new and exciting things. And um, the idea of playing two parts um, and having scenes with myself was something I'd never done before. And yeah. uh, it was a challenge, but you know, as a result, um, we are because you're location dependent as well. We're shooting a scene; it could be in episode one, and then it could be again in episode four. But we're shooting also the same scene from a different point of view. So we would have to do uh, scenes, uh, the same scene in different episodes, in different ways, and then have to do them again twice because it was two characters. So it was a very strange thing to try and keep it all um, in in order and, you know. Would you great. remember from moments, you know, obviously this is a real, you know, pretentious platitude, but acting is, you know, listening and reacting. So would you remember, you know, if, if you were doing one side, one, one version of yourself, would you have to remember the choices you made and then kind of say, okay, take one, I did this. So on the reverse, don't forget, take one, I got to try and, it's like little puzzle pieces. You have to make sure each choices yeah. respond to each choice you make. Would you actually have to make like mental notes of the choices you made from take to take? I did. I did. That's and, unbelievable. And 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 it became a little bit easier. You know, it's a weird, it's a weird thing that you just. There's no one way of doing it. I guess. I mean, I've talked to a couple of other actors that have done this kind of thing, and the thing that I got before I started was that everyone's approach was different and is different, and mm -hmm. you just kind of find what works best for you, and uh, and then, yeah, I found because. Um, I wouldn't, I didn't use an acting double and I didn't want to be reacting to somebody I was acting opposite, even though I was just going to ask that. So you're just reacting to so, nothing. So I was reacting what I, what I did, the, the way that, the way that we did it was I would record the lines. I would, I would read the scene, act the scene with the sound guy and he would just mm -hmm. on a boom mic or just, we would just do it mm -hmm. as an audio and then he put it into his system. And then on an iPad, we uh, had each line uh, as cues and so whatever character was driving the scene was the character that i would film first and i would rehearse the scene for the camera and the crew as the, as we felt like the blocking this is the way it should be this is the way it would look 
I would then act the act it imagining I was opposite and I had an earwig in my ear. And yeah. when I would say my line, I would hear myself re respond, but we had somebody off camera hitting the cue on the iPad to play the uh, other character's response. And then once we kind of settled on the take, I would change over and uh, I would then watch what we had recorded. We would be able to line up the shot and I would just watch what I did and I tried to remember what I had done. If I was moving uh, and I was reaching for something, I remember, oh, on that line, I'm reaching. So my mm -hmm. eye line would have to follow. And it became choreography. And it was a really so you'd almost pick cool so you pick the hero take or it wouldn't be like if you did let's say you did five takes you wouldn't say okay when we flip around I'm going to you know for my for the earwig lines first take I want the lines from take one second take I want the lines from take two like you you weren't we would just kind of settle we would just kind of settle on you pick the hero which one take. we were going to use we because that's the, great. the thing is is that we that's didn't great. you know we did also didn't have that much time it. Um, of course, we, it's got to be your nightmare to have to as, do. As I'm sure you experienced as well. You know, you, you, you don't have, it isn't, it is like shooting an eight hour movie, but you're shooting yeah. it in normal movie length, you know, time. The time it takes to shoot it, you yeah. know, an hour and a half or two hour. Movie. You know, and then, there's and a then scene the technical where, uh, when you, uh, when you first come out of the, you no know, spoilers, right? It doesn't matter. When you first come out of the spa and you're driving and you actually go running through the corn, as I was watching mm. it, I was like, I feel like that at least once a day in Massachusetts. That's just kind of my my general, like, I was like, I, you know, that's a real good, like, benchmark, just a good little check-in for my life to be like, that's a good sign if I feel that way without being a clone. <laughs> also, why don't you age? Are, are you drinking baby blood? I most certainly age. I, I, especially these days. Oh, you know what? That actually bleeds nicely into this next question. Uh, your first <laughs> acting job was Sisters in 1992. How has TV <laughs> changed? Did they make the list for you of questions? Have they made a they list did. for you of questions <laughs> to ask me? I'm only picking a couple, but I, I want. No, no, no. That's fine. I, I think. What are some of the, this would be good. What are some of the? Go through the questions that they've asked, that they want you to ask. Well, me. they had one that said. Uh, what was it like being on Friends? And you know, this, I actually have a question that I specifically have always thought. Uh, it's not a question so much as it is just an attaboy. In terms of Hollywood, you are a part of, like, it's amazing just to be a part of any, you know, uh, community. You know, I, I'm in Marvel world. And you are a part of Marvel. You're a part of Friends. And you're in the, the Apatow crew. Like, those are three real clubby, clicky, like, benchmarky things like that's I, I can't think of anybody else that has such a kind of widespread uh, uh affiliation with so many different genres and groups what basically what does it feel like to be awesome no <laughs> uh well that i definitely don't know no but here's uh, a good question <laughs> which which one are you most proud of and just remember who who's who's in the room <laughs> Well, it's interesting because they do seem like kind of pockets and chapters in life. And um, I, I just, I guess it's actually it's been around forever. <laughs> but where, where, I, there's a little the bit of money? a, there, I do, there is a little bit of a, kind of a Forrest Gump feel to it where I've, yeah, like, oh, really. for a while I was in this world <laughs> that people know. And then this, but, but at the same time, in something like Friends, I, you know, it's, it, the show was about them. But it's an interesting thing to be a part of. I came on at the end and was only in it for just a blip. But I was I felt like, oh, I just don't want to get in the way. I'm like a prop on this show. I just I'm not it's not about, <laughs> it's not about Mike Hannigan. But there's but there's a very interesting feeling to be a part of something that has that kind of uh profound impact on pop culture and um and what do you it, get most and recognized I never, for? I never what, what, what you get, like, I mean, I experienced that with, with Avengers, too. I was going to say, because even know, in the Avengers world, it was kind of like, you know, welcoming into the to the fold, but very quickly. Like, I can't imagine you not gelling with the group. So I'm assuming you kind of just, you, you're like, you're like sorbet, just a, a palate cleanser. You know what I mean? It's an always welcome <laughs> addition. 
Um, (laughs) The nicest thing anybody's Um, ever said to me, Chris. Thank you. There you go. I feel like we're just talking all about me and and my career. I haven't even, (laughs) you have, have, I mean, my God, we want to, I want to talk to you and ask you all sorts of interesting things. But in the meantime, we'll continue with me. The, uh, the, the thing is, is it's, it's, it, there's, it is a surreal, it is a surreal feeling to be a part of something that, you know, is seen in every country. And when it was, you know, working with you on Avengers, uh, really on, mm. on Civil War for that first time. Um, yeah. You know, that, car- that scene that we had where we were in the car park. Um, yeah. And there was, I guess there the first was day a, I met you. Yeah. And there was a real kind of, uh, oh, wow. Um, nervousness about S- Scott Lang. And I was, and I just really kind of played into that because that part of, that was part of what I was feeling anyway. I'd look around yeah. and think, whoa, there's, you know, there's Chris Evans and there's Sebastian Stan and you and, know, and, did not and, wow, and there's the all. suits. Like, okay. see this, I, I, I remember there was, we were filming <laughs> that whole sequence and, and, and we were all kind of having to change into our suits in this. Do you remember there was like a little, it was like a little makeshift locker room. Yeah, a little tent. Yeah, 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 of course. And I remember like we're all kind of like changing into things and, and uh and i saw all the suits on the racks and it was it was like yeah it felt like being in the, it felt like being in the locker room of the of the of a, of a super bowl winning football team i don't know if you remember this on uh that day it was literally the day i met you mackie and i and scarlet we got in our head that we were going to shoot <laughs> this is hilarious we got in our head that we were going to make a little video just just for the marvel gang um, like a little, you know, culmination, uh, like, like a, like a yearbook video of, of set to that song from Greece. Uh, what, what's that one song in the end? We go together like Bama, whatever that song is. Um, mm-hmm. and so we were just going to go around and take little clips of videos of people just kind of dancing and, and cut it all together. And so the first day I was like, all right, I'll start collecting some of this footage was the day you were on set. I have. You know what? No, I'm not going to do it. Right now. <laughs> I'm not going to do it right now. I have the. Footage. I don't remember the first day I met you. I asked you to do this. I was like, "Hi, nice to meet you. You don't know me, but uh, can I get this group of guys? You know, it was you, Mackie, I think, uh, Renner, Sebastian, uh, and I just said, "Look, everyone, just dance for 30 seconds." And you did it. You were a great sport. You willingly danced with very little explanation from me. Uh, and then I never completed the video. I just abandoned. That's all I have. But. Uh, but I got that footage of our first day of meeting, of you dancing, and you're great. Wow. wow. All right, maybe that's I, uh, the next thing I tweeted. I, I must have blocked it out. I don't remember it at all. Good. But I had to it's dance. There's no way I'm not going to dance. That's that's a little bit. It, you feel like you're the new kid. No, in you school. had to do it. You got cornered. You had the no choice. Popular kids is I'm do gonna, this. I'm going to find it right now. This is this is this is more interesting than whatever I was going to ask you anyway. Where where I have this footage. It's going to be great. All right, go ahead. Ask me something in the meantime. Um, while well, I, I, was asking, you know, I'm, I want to, I do, do want to bring this back to defending uh, Jacob, but while oh, we're right, on the topic thing, yep. of, uh, while we're mm-hmm. on the topic of Avengers and I mean, what is it like for you to play such uh, an iconic character and in, in arguably the, you know, the most popular movie franchise in the world? In history. Uh, you know, intimidating at first, and I'm sorry, I'm still looking for, ah, oh, I found it. I found it. <laughs> um, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> I can't show it. It's way too embarrassing. Is it bad? Oh, because I'm in it too. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. <laughs> it's, it's Renner, me, uh, Lizzie, Mackie, you, and Sebastian. Oh, you kill your. Oh, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna put this in. Some, anyway, um, what was it like? It was um intimidating oh, at God. first. Um, you know that everyone has uh everyone has expectations. Everyone kind of has in their mind. Most times with the character, you're the first tracks in the snow. You know, so this is something where you have a baked in the cake um connection to the character from from the people you're you know offering the the movie to. So. Uh, it's intimidating and overwhelming, but very quickly, you know what it's like working at Marvel. They, they make you feel so comfortable. Um, and you, they never, it, it feels like such a, such a group effort. You know that every decision is going to kind of be uh, vetted over um, 
endlessly and and, and they're always going to come out it's, it's it's a real landscape of competing ideas and the best idea wins and 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 that's how they end up with so many good movies so so very quickly you kind of put down your fear and uh just kind of recline a little bit and recognize that you're in good hands but you know that feeling i mean what that must it? have been scary playing well, scott let me, let me ask you this all right all right we all, all right, we're working with marvel yeah 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 what is it like for you when you go outside what is it like for you if you get if you have to, if you're if you find yourself where there's just like a bunch of kids around what what is that like? How, uh, do they just freak out? You know, it's yeah, a little bit, and it, but it's it's that's so nice because I I you know I don't know about you, but I you know I grew up with Star Wars, and I I had certain characters that just meant the world to me, and and you know we live in a a, a much different time now you know back when i was young celebrity was far away you know what i mean and and actors were only accessible through their work and now you have this other channel where you can actually offer a little bit more of who you are which is a, a tricky uh, you know tightrope to walk uh, but but it is nice to be able to share a little bit extra especially playing a character that i respect so much and trying to you know create this nexus between the work you do and 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 the impact you might want to have on kids you know it's so nice when a kid looks up to you what, what, what a strange thing what a strange thing you know what i mean all, all very undeserving in a way you know what i mean it's not like you know you're just an actor but but it's nice to kind of uh feel that the interaction can mean more than i don't know like i i i met hulk hogan when i was younger and it was the best thing i'd ever met seen in my, in my life but you know no disrespect to hulk hogan but but sometimes you meet people where I don't know. You, you, you get your own identity tangled up with them, and you know what I mean. You all you you start to aspire to things, and uh, and and it's it's motivating in a way. And uh, it's I think the role itself kind of brings a lot of that to the table, and that's that's nice because again, it's it's nothing I did. It's just something I get to benefit. I'm I'm downstream of something else, you know. So it's uh, it's nice in, in a very serpentine lengthy answer it's nice to interact with kids especially when they walk away feeling something that the character kind of put in their head already um yeah does that make sense do you, do you yeah, feel a pressure sense. because you know captain america is obviously that character is perfect he's a perfect person pretty much yeah yeah uh, i mean how how well maybe not maybe much not, of maybe responsibility not do you feel outside um, of the you know in the real world it's probably not pressure put on by the world it's probably pressure maybe you you know when you know what it, when, when you when you spend a lot of time with the character and when you try to um find your own parallels with it you end up more often than not falling short of of a character like steve rogers you know what i mean he's, he's an impossible um the, the bar is set impossibly high so you know in a very personal intimate way you kind of feel a little bit of like a pebble in your shoe that you could be doing more, you could be trying harder, or, you know, any little thing that you go through in your life. If the narrative in your head for, you know, 10 years has been trying to think how this character would think, it's hard not to absorb at least a little bit of it. And and like I said, end up feeling really bad about yourself. <laughs> um, no, but it's, it's yeah, it's, it's and I, I wouldn't say I feel pressure from outside. I'd say, you know, you, you put pressure on yourself, I suppose. Um, in the marble vein, let's, let's come on. I'm hitting the ball back to you. Well, no, hold no, on. This was going your way now. This was going your way now. This was this was such a tee up for a defending. You were doing Jacob. something. Okay, complete. Segway. Finish the shot. Come on. Because Finish you know you have you have it's, it's a dare, opposite end of the spectrum here. I mean, a noble pursuit, but my God, this is a guy who's really tormented in different ways, and is part of the oh. appeal to play a character that is so different than what people are used to maybe seeing you mm. in if they've only if they only have would maybe know about Captain America even yeah. done so many things. You know <laughs> I really am I'm not I'm not continuously trying to just kick the ball back, but I am curious as to what you would say as well because I always feel that <laughs> Is this you neither one of us wants to dog. talk about herself? <laughs> I'm like, you know what, Paul? I think my answers would best be encompassed in what you have to say about what do you think I would say? <laughs> um, I, I, I think you never want to let the tail wag. Like, you know, you, you don't want to cut your cloth according to uh, perception, and you you, you want to make sure your creative appetite is just what's what's driving you. You can't deny that people might see you a certain way, and you can't deny that you know even playing a certain role over a long enough period of time, you get um, creatively curious and restless. 
Um, but but I, I really try to go out of my, my way to make sure that the choices I make within this industry, the choices I make in my personal life aren't dictated by uh, how I'm perceived. Because I just think that's impossible to fully know accurately and, and, and a slippery slope. I, I just don't, I, I don't see the value in, in incorporating that um, data. In, I guess I, I guess I shouldn't say how you feel like you're perceiving and you want to do this because you're maybe perceived in a different way. I'm thinking more along the lines of you as an actor. Are you? Oh yeah. How excited are you to do something that is a, a, a different kind of role? Because you haven't, you, haven't, you know, I mean, you've I'm, played many, you've played many different kinds of characters. Sure. But, uh, I'm also not like one of these guys that you know, I, I'll eat the same thing for breakfast for 10 years. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't crave, I, I really try and let my, I, I'm very capricious, you know what I mean by nature. So I, I wake up one day and, and want something and then wake up the next day and want the complete opposite. So sometimes I can hit a groove where I just only want to do the same. Basically, it's, it's not that I wake up and only want to find variety in my performance. I might find a character that is in the military and is magnanimous and taciturn and all these Captain America-esque qualities, but if there's a great director and if there's a great writer and I just feel like collaborating with them, then, you know, I'll pursue it. So it's, there's a, there's a real cocktail of reasons why I choose to do what I do. But like I said, I, I could be, uh, you know, incredibly varied or I could be incredibly quotidian for a long time and, and not really, not mind. How about yourself? I'm just, I mean, people know you as I don't just know, man. the most I'm just affable guy thinking about All those amazing words you just used in the last minute. <laughs> quotidian quotidian like daily like to do something uh, like ritualistically you know i only know uh, it is a good word right quotidian. <laughs> you know you know what's so funny paul i can't even believe you're giving me credit about being a wordsmith because you know for a fact so we we got to all you viewers out there we got we were big into boggle uh during the marvel movies and I'm going to tell you yes. right now, this is without fail. It's it's without fail. You could be playing with a group of 20 people. The person who is going to win is Paul Rudd. The person who's going to come in nail-biting second is Don Cheadle. And uh, Ruffalo will be way at the end. <laughs> Ruffalo. Although one day <laughs> Ruffalo got... Ruffalo, he'll have like two words on his whole list, but he got asbestos. <laughs> he found asbestos on the boggle board. It's a real anomaly. Uh, anyway, he's he. <laughs> that is that is pretty impressive. But that's because yeah. Mark fights the valiant fight. He's probably out right now marching against asbestos reform. Sure. Yeah, I was going to say he has no time for children's games. He's doing like you know God's work. <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, what else? Those are I fun. Have? Those boggle games. I I liked that. That in between. You were phenomenal. All of our tapes, you were phenomenal. I'll, you found words. You well, never stopped writing. It's incredibly infuriating. You want to like knock your pad and paper away because you just, I'm just staring at the board waiting for it to speak to me and you don't, you don't stop writing. Your pen is moving the whole time. Do, do you consider yourself a competitive person? <laughs> I'm about to flip this table. So a little, <laughs> just thinking about losing this to me. Yeah. Tell you what, I like, I like competition. I don't think like it doesn't put me in a bad mood if I lose, even though I just said mm -hmm. I was going to flip the table. You know, I, I think it's fun to to get involved. It's fun to you know be passionate about it, but but I, I don't carry it with me. No, right? Yeah, that makes I sense. Mean, so, like I, whenever no, in those kinds of games, I get super competitive and grow. You yeah. know, if if there was any kind of group activity, like a like a trivial pursuit or any kind of game. Yeah kind of growing up, uh, I, midway through, you I care. hated myself. You care. I care. Yeah. I, it's taken a lot, a lot of work as, to, as, to <laughs> like be cool during games because sometimes I would just, uh, I didn't like the way I did and I'd get really into it. Yeah. And I didn't, yeah, I was wondering if you, games. Had, if you ever had to deal with that. Did you get that competitive about things? Competitive? No, I mean, well, you know, I tell you what, acting is a great, um, it's like if you're gonna like break a mayor or something. A acting will kind of break that in you, because because you won't you won't. Um, it's very cyclical. It's very never ending. Even if you kind of get the medicine for that competitive nature, it reinvents in a heartbeat. So so acting, if if you want to be endlessly miserable, 
be a competitive actor. You know what I mean? If, if you want to kind of find peace with this industry, you got to kind of put that down. Save it for Boggle. You know what I mean? But but when it comes to this <laughs> industry, I got to say, I, I don't consider myself at all competitive. I actually feel like a real champion of the other people in, in my profession. I think everyone's phenomenal. And give me three beers and I'll just go around the room congratulating everybody on just being the greatest person. Um, yeah, I think I think competitiveness in this business is uh, uh, it's toxic. What about within your family, like your brother, you like compete? Oh, fuck them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bleep that one out. No, You're no, my brother and I too. I mean, my, my brother and I are wildly, wildly competitive in terms of uh, he was he was doing quarantine with me, and so we 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 have an all time record on our phone for 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 ping pong, for shuffleboard, for Mario Kart, for for everything. So so we were really adding to our all time list. So him and I take things real seriously, but but again. Not professionally, not not in the acting world, and you know, where right. where, where it could really create a rift, we put those weapons down. But uh, you know, board game will you know not talk for a few days. You know, playing character Captain America obviously comes with pressure because he's so well known. I didn't know Ant Man as well. Is there pressure trying to bring a character that you kind of get? It's 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 not one of the names. It's not Superman. You know what I mean? It's not like Batman. Was it pre was there pressure to kind of say, all right? This is going to be a franchise. It's not like a supporting character. You're getting a standalone movie. Is there pressure to take a character that's one of the lesser known comic book characters and make sure he can like be on the level of what Marvel has, you know, come to expect? Yeah, I mean there's there's probably look, there's pressure in every single move you're making kind of in, in this world, I think in the Marvel yeah. world. Uh and how much you really let it affect you is uh the key. I, I figured there's probably just pressure entering the Marvel universe and these and this film canon that is so uh, popular with so many people all over the world. Mm. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to be, you know, the weak link uh, to take a character like Ant Man, which yeah, very you know few people knew. Um, was uh was, was and and people would think they would ask me like i say oh, i got this part i'm playing ant-man and then they'd say well what does ant-man do and i said he, sh he can shrink to the size of an ant and then and and then he also has but he retains you know strength uh and he can also uh control ants and talk to and, and people would laugh and explain <laughs> what the character does <laughs> and it was me playing it, which is not, I'm not the first guy that I think people would think of when it comes to playing a big superhero. So, you know, you want to be accepted. You want to make it, I mean, I wanted to try and make a character that was a superhero that was kind of a regular person that the whole world of it, uh, of superherodom seemed uh, overwhelming. And, and what do you do with this? And um no. In a, in a way to make it somewhat identifiable, but there, yeah, there's there's a pressure, and then there's also a pressure as you as you know because you've met many people who are uh, who do know a lot about Ant Man. In fact, might know everything about Ant Man, and there's people yeah. who know everything about Captain America, and you know these characters are important to to many people. Mm. You don't want to just you know you want to treat them with the respect and hopefully do the character a service, and certainly the character that was the way it was created by. Jack Kirby and Stan Lee and you know and and, and and everyone at Marvel. I mean, you know they're they've been around for a while. What is going on with the next Ant Man? Like I, I'm not even sure what's happening with Marvel right now. What's what's the future plan? There is a third, right? You, well, yeah, we've we've um, we've that's 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 the idea. I mean, I don't know what I'm supposed to say and what I'm not supposed to say, but with this quarantine, who even knows anything anymore? But there's no plan um, on, is there plans on shooting anytime soon? I'm, I'm not going to yeah. be able to say anything, Chris. You know, no, of course you know not. I mean, I know the drill. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why you I'm asking. It. I might as well ask what your paycheck says. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what's your penis size? <laughs> <laughs> it's um, even bigger than my paycheck. <laughs> um, there's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and you know, put in your own Ant Man joke there. Um, <laughs> there, there so you, you know, you're talking about how um, 
the uh, the creators of the show have teenage sons, mm -hmm. and you don't. No, uh, and you know, it was what was that like playing a a dad? Yeah, uh, I loved it. I mean, I, I had a wonderful relationship with my father. So, you know, if you have to kind of find parallels in your own life to draw from, what a lovely, what what a lovely, uh, you know, uh, avenue to kind of stroll down to try and remember all the sweet moments I had with my own father and the 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 depth that that love can reach. And you know, obviously, it's a little bit of a, a darker. Uh, subject matter in the show because obviously that love leads him to kind of bend his ethics his morals um but 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 for the sake of something that i would consider really really pure and and something that i would probably do as well you know for the sake of my kid so yeah you're right i don't have a kid but but it, it was a really enjoyable role to play i i you know e even down to the the posture of you know, poking your head in, the, in your kid's bedroom door and just saying good night and just those little kind of the physicality of that and the kind of cadence of that is something I remember so well and, and contributes to such a healthy, secure, safe part of my childhood. And, and it's, it's so nice to kind of play the role that provides that in the face of this really, really awful circumstance where that thing you love so much, this not just your kid, but the the family dynamic, the identity that you get tangled up in at being a father uh, is, is this thing that you fight for. And, and that's obviously what the character is fighting for. So um, in a lot, sorry, I'm, I'm scratching my dog. I'm not like doing a weird thing under here. <laughs> um, yeah, it, that, it was actually lovely. It was really enjoyable. Obviously it was, it was a, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, darkness surrounding the plot, but, but, but just for the sake of trying to every day, think about how much you can love somebody and something and, how much you can fight for something um, and, and defy morals and, you know, your own personal code for the sake of someone else is, uh, I don't know, it's kind of lovely. It opens you up a little bit. It was great. Hmm. How did, how did you, um, wait, tell me again that you're, uh, you're not, you're like, you're not, you're not a detective or like a prosecutor. Or, 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 DA, uh, DA, district attorney. D, DA, right? You're right, right. Okay. So, uh, so then you get this part. And you're playing a DA. Mm -hmm. How do you? You know what it's. You, you don't have a son, but you know what that. How do you? How do you play yeah. a DA? Do you just follow what's in the script? Do you talk to the director, or do you talk to DAs? How? What? How did you go about preparing for, to play that? Luckily, role? a lot of the people we had hired. Uh, you know, it takes place in Boston, so a lot of those other roles where you have, you know, whether it's, you know, the judge or the bailiff or you know, all the people in the courtroom who who are hired uh, to play these, you know, one or two line roles. We also wanted their accents. So you get a lot of people who are authentic to the Boston area in this part. You know, they, they not only have the, the accent, but they have the vernacular. I mean, they, they know what to say. They know what this uh, wording is. So just kind of talking about, you know, it's easy to get carried away with the performance of a scene like that. And, you know, like, well, would, it, would a DA ever say that? You know, is this, is, this grand, is this TV or is this grounded in reality? So simple things like that. The writer of the book, William Landay, was on set quite a bit. He, he I think he actually might have, he was a DA, um, but but yeah, we, we actually had a nice group of people on set to kind of keep us in bounds. It's like when you do a movie where you play like, you know, military or something like that. You need someone in there who's, you know, yeah. military. Otherwise you're gonna look like what a is, fool. What, what is it like when you have the writer of the book and then the writer of the episode? You know, uh, normally set, I, I've done time. that. I've done that before. I, I've done some things, well, not quite like that, but similar enough where someone who is part of the parent material is on set and it can be intimidating, but, but William was just, w what a guy. So nice, so friendly, so accommodating. I mean, we changed a few things. We took some liberties. He couldn't have been more on board. He, he was the nicest guy in the world and, and his voice actually was fantastic in the novel. I mean, it, it really, Mark took certain lines, you know, verbatim off the page, um, but in no way was he, you know, it wasn't like, oh, William's on set. Everyone, you know, mind, mind, mind your manners. He, he, he was great. He couldn't have been more supportive. The one question for you that, um, that actually I really want to ask. How do you feel about Tom Brady going to the Buccaneers? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> um, you know what? He, he gave me 20 years of 
sports memories. It's, it's an embarrassment of riches. I have seen so many Super Bowl victories in my life. Yeah, he, yeah. He can, he, he, he can go wherever he wants. He, you know what I mean? I, I, I wish him all the best. I, I can't even imagine the dedication. I've been watching. Uh, you must be watching The Last Dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. God. Oh, I mean, it's just the, the, the commitment, the, the drive, the, the focus, all of it is just so unbelievable, so inspiring, starts from such a young age and is so all-consuming. Actors, you know, we take breaks, chunks of time off where our brain shuts off. These guys, they never stop. Tom, I'm sure, doesn't stop. And, and you know, for that, <laughs> at his age, whatever he wants to do, however he wants to see his career finish out, I, I I wish them all the best. Are you going to root for the Buccaneers? Um, I will never buy a Buccaneers jersey. Uh, but, but you know, look, put it this way. If the Pats aren't going to make it, I'll probably be tuning into some Bucs games. Yeah. How about all your right. boys, man? How about your boy? How, how nice is it to know you have the best quarterback in the league and he's like 16 years old? <laughs> like you guys are going to be good for yeah. 15 years. God willing. It's this is he. I mean, this is it. You, and you say the embarrassment of riches. You've only known what it's like to grow up with the Super Bowl victories. True. I, I True. feel you know this is the first time in my life. It's an incredible well, get, feeling. Get used to it because you guys aren't going anywhere. <laughs> get used to it, man. This is the new normal for you guys. KC is the benchmark, and it's really because of that guy. I mean, the whole team's great. Great coach. You guys are great all around. But that man, he's, that dude, he's special. Whoo! Yeah. It's unbelievable and a great it's guy fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what makes it all the sweeter. Yeah. All right, all right. great. Hey, Thanks, guys. Thank you. I'm gonna go. Uh, Thank you. Take a few more uh, of these. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Take care, team. Thanks a lot. Good seeing you, Chris. I hate these. These are. It's always an awkward thing. They're a nightmare. Like a real They're conversation. A nightmare. <laughs> They're awful. Yeah. <laughs> you made it much better. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, we, as did you. I didn't want. By the way. Only because I was right behind. I didn't want to do this in front of a bunch of books. I look like an asshole. I was going to say, what are you, fucking... <laughs> what are you, fucking professor? Oh, Professor Rudd. I was uh... running late. I was running late. You should have yeah. done it in front yeah. of the Cabbage Patch Kid you have on the desk. Because we all got a glimpse of that, too. There you go. This guy. <laughs> this guy right here.